Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Boss of Anatomy. Today we discuss the radiological anatomy of a thorax. But first of all, you have to know how to read the radiological fill of a chest or a thorax. For this, you can see our previous video, radiological anatomy of upper limb, whose link is given below. Now we discuss the radiological anatomy of a thorax or a chest. The first of all, how to read the x-ray? The first you have to describe a type. The type of a radiological film of this x-ray is of a plane type because there is a no special position is required and no any radio opaque dye is used. The second is a view. The view taken for this x-ray is a posterior anterior view. The standard view for the x-ray thorax or x-ray chest is a posterior anterior view in which patient stand with their anterior part of a chest against the x-ray film and the x-ray tube is placed six feet behind the patient. So the x-ray passes from the posterior to anterior direction. Now why we are taking the PA view over the AP in the x-ray of a thorax? The first reason in the PA view we have seen the position of the patient. In the PA view the heart of the patient lies nearer to the x-ray plate at an optimum distance that is a 6 feet. So accurate assessment of a heart size, cardiac size due to minimum magnification is done. The heart shadow appear as it is. There is a no magnification occur in the PA view as the heart is lies nearer to the x-ray plate. In the AP view, there is a magnificent slight magnification of the heart side and the media stenum is occurred uh, due to venous distension. So we are taking the PA view over the AP view for the accurate cardiac side. Third, you have to describe is a region. Of course, this is the chest region of the chest or the thorax. So, it is a plane type. Now, what structure you have to describe in this x-ray? You have to remember ABCD. The structure uh, describing the thorax is ABCD. The first is A. A for the airway. Airway which seen in this x-ray is a trachea. So the trachea is appear as a midline shadow. You can see the midline dark shadow in the upper part of the mediastinum. Mediastinum lies between the two uh, shadow of the two lungs. So in the upper part of the mediastinum in the midline you can see the dark shadow. This is the shadow of the trachea. Okay. Now we understand the color effect of the different structure in the x-ray. The color effect of the different structure in the radiograph depends on, on the tissue absorption of the x-ray beam. If the tissue absorb less amount or least amount of the x-ray beam, it appear as a darker like a lung trachea air which contain the mostly the air air will absorb the least x-ray beam so it will appear as a darker structure in the x-ray if the tissue is absorbed the more amount of the x-ray beam it appear as a white structure like a bonds okay some soft tissue so this this is the color effect depending on the absorption of a x-ray beam. Now the soft tissue, other soft tissue like a muscle, fat is appear as a gray structure. It is not as white as a bone, not dark as a air. So this is the first structure seen in the x-ray 
chest is a trachea midline dark shadow in the upper part of the media stenum the second structure seen you can remember from b b for breathing b for bones the breathing organ is a lung so the organ you can able to see is a lung okay the two lung you can clearly see as a dark shadow because it contain the air which appear as a dark that we have seen why it is appear as a dark now you have to identify which is a left lung which is a right lung which is easily identified by the cardiac nodes and this is the lingula this is the cardiac nodes which is present in the left lung this is the left lung this is the right lung now in relation to the edges of the lung you can able to see four important seal hordes or a outlines these are the seal hord of right heart border left heart border right hemi diaphragm and left hemi diaphragm okay or a uh, shadow of a right dome of diaphragm shadow of a left dome of diaphragm okay now you can see below the left dome of diaphragm or shadow of a left hemi diaphragm you can see the dark shadow which is a normal again dark shadow is due to air and this air is present in the fundus of the stomach which is present below the left dome of diaphragm right now this dome of the diaphragm literally shadow of the dome of the diaphragm both the shadow literally literally most it form an angle with the shadow of the rib this is the shadow of the rib and it form an angle this is the right side and the left side this shadow this angle is known as a costo means rib phrenic means diaphragm costo phrenic angle costo phrenic angle on the both the side now what is the clinical important of this costo phrenic angle frequently asked in the viva the clinical important the, is that it contain the costo pleural uh, uh, costo phrenic recess costo phrenic recess is a most dependent part of the lung so when the pleural effusion occur pleural effusion means the accumulation of the fluid in the pleural cavity so in the pleural effusion the fluid accumulate in the most dependent part that is a costo phrenic recess so in the pleural uh, effusion in the x ray of the thorax this costo phrenic angle will appear as a white shadow or you can say it is obliterated okay and the obliteration amount uh, uh, degree of the obliteration is depend on the amount of the fluid so this is the important of a costo phrenic angle we have seen the b for breathing that is a lung shadow second b for the bone so all the possible bone you have to describe so first you can able to see the ribs you can count the rib from the above this one is a, a side of the first rib second rib third fourth fifth sixth seven eight nine ten ten rib you can able to see this is the shadow of the clavicle medial end which articulate with the sternum the shadow of the sternum is overlapping with the mediastinal shadow and the vertebral shadow literally it articulate with the acromion process this is the acromion process so this is a scapula over here the scapula side of the scapula is clearly seen this is the glenoid cavity this is the coracoid process and see the slightly the head of the humerus and here in the neck you can see uh, cervical vertebrae you can clearly see the transverse process okay so this is the b for the breathing that is lungs and a bones now the third thing is a c for the circulation Uh, 
circulation circulatory function is of a heart so you can see c for a circulation that is a heart shadow heart shadow is seen as a mediastinum in the lower part of the mediastinum between the two heart uh, two uh, side of the lungs this is the heart shadow you can see the right border of heart the left border of the heart if you trace the left border of the heart you can see the convex shadow white shadow this is a shadow of a arch of the aorta which is known as a aortic knuckle which is more prominent in the old age now this heart shadow below it make an angle with the diaphragm which is known as a cardiophrenic angle this one and this one is a cardiophrenic angle now the size of the heart is can be measured in the thorax you can measure or identify if the heart is increase in the size or not which is known as a cardiomegaly so that can be how will you diagnose the cardiomegaly the maximum width of the heart that is a horizontal diameter maximum horizontal diameter if it is more than the half of the width of the thoracic cavity this is the half of a total width of the thoracic cavity if this width is more than of this width then it is said patient is having a cardiomegaly so this is about the c c for the circulation and the last part is a d the d for deformity any deformity or a disability so you can able to see the fracture or the dislocation of the bone or the disability related to the soft tissue pleural effusion cardiomegaly etc so this is all about a radiological anatomy of a chest or a thorax thank you if you like our video click on the like button and share with your friends to get the regular updates on anatomy video by viva voice of anatomy subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon